Good morning, House of Purpose. It's so good to see all of you guys, always, every week. It's my favorite day of the week. I am going to open with a scripture out of Isaiah 55, and it's verses 8 through 11. It says, My thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord, and my ways are far beyond anything that you could imagine. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. The rain and snow come down from, he from the heavens and stay on the ground to water the earth. They cause the grain to grow, producing seed for the farmer and bread for the hungry. It is the same with my word. I send it out, and it always produces fruit. It will accomplish all I want it to, and it will prosper everywhere I send it. Hallelujah. That is a good word from the Lord this morning. <laughs> amen and amen. I'm going to open us with some prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, we invite the Holy Spirit here. We invite you. We invite the Lord Jesus. We love you. We're here to celebrate and honor you and worship you together as a, a family in the body of Christ here at church. And we're just so thankful that you gave us life and that you give us your marvelous light to, to direct us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Yeah. 
team. Isn't it amazing that we have? <laughs> it's <laughs> so fun to have a worship team. Well, and isn't it a blessing that we're open? Yes. Because there are states where it's still pretty closed up. So praise God. <laughs> Yeah. 
with this time to just reflect on our lives and to absorb you, Lord, and the direction that you would have us go through the message, the, the um, Lord, just your sovereign ordering of our steps. We thank you, Lord, for that. We're lost without you, but we can stand in your righteousness alone. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, praise God. Thank you for joining us in worship this morning. We had a grand old time, didn't we? We did with our Father God. So I want to share with you a couple of announcements that we're protecting other people. When you sit down to worship, you don't have to. Obviously, you've got to be able to sing. It's kind of hard to sing through a mask. You may sound like, ooh, 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 ooh. But, you know, we appreciate you supporting other people that may be susceptible, especially when we're out moving around. Um, as far as the kitchen goes to, um, people will get you your refreshments, so no one can go back just simply into the kitchen, just volunteers uh, regarding that. And August 8th, August 8th, right, Nancy? Correct. We're going to do a prayer walk down the alleys again. So we need to pray over this neighborhood. Um, we're excited that, uh, you know, our facility keeps becoming more secure. There's Steve right there. Steve, come out here, man. I want to thank this guy for doing a lot of work around here. This guy's incredible. That's right. Yeah. Glad you're here. He put, he put the fencing up and back, added the uh, Constantino wire so we can keep the um, safe people inside and the, no, um, where we can, how does it work? <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. So we're, our goal is to protect all of you as well as keep the facility clean. And uh, there's a lot of work that went into the facility too, including outlets in the building. Thank you, Steve, for putting all the outlets in. Yeah. He's an incredible electrician. We appreciate you. Let's give it. Yes. Oh, prayer walk is going to be November 8th. That's going to be no, in the no, alley. No, it's August, August 8th. 8th sorry. 10 30. 10 30. Yeah, we're announcing events for November. This is crazy. November 8th will actually be a Sunday. So we'll be here too. Yeah, yeah. All right, so when we do the resource room later, remember what we do is we have one person go through the room, get what they need, one person in the room, and then they go back out through the gate. Uh, you know, alongside the uh, side of the shed, and there will be a gate open uh, for people to go back out. So thank you for, um, you know, being orderly. We have a God that's a God of order. I mean, he ordered the universe, so we're excited to be a part of that, and we're made in his image. So God bless you. Thank you for coming, and Pastor Nancy's going to lead us in the offering. Yeah, it's great to see all of you out here today. This is wonderful. Amen. <laughs> and it was great worship today, I thought. Amen. It was really yes. good. Yes, yes. So uh, we're about to worship the Lord with the giving of our offerings. But first, I want to mention that if you have a prayer request, you can fill out the yellow card that's at your seat and give us something to pray over. And you can just slip that in the offering when it comes by. We know that God does answer prayer. And so while you're preparing your offerings and your prayer requests, I want to talk to you today about the wave of revival. Amen. So this is exciting. I really think this is an exciting thing. Yes. Uh, but lately, I just have been hearing a lot about waves, and I kind of felt like, I wonder if God asked something about waves. I you know, even did a word search on waves. Um, but when I was doing that, I found uh, some other things that I wanted to talk about. But there can be good and bad waves, right? You know, a bad wave would be like a heat wave, um, and then a crime wave would be a bad thing. Also, yeah, a tsunami, that can be a bad thing because that can be very destructive. Um, and a second wave of coronavirus, that's kind of the one that's probably the most in the news. Different people wondering, are we having the second wave or is there something bigger coming? Uh, those kinds of things. So that's the kind of wave we want to avoid. Uh, but God also has a counteracting good wave for us, I really believe. And I believe he's sending a wave of revival you know, which I think is awesome. And I have a, a picture here. Uh, from This is from Orange County. Revival has broken out in California. Yes! Whoa. <laughs> so that's an awesome thing. All these people, you know, they're not, I think they're not really even allowed to meet in California, still the churches. So I know these people posted the church has left the building. 
Yeah. Pray and so they're right. out on the beach and they're holding revivals and people are getting saved. They're getting baptized out in the ocean. Hey, is that Jennifer? Hey. Hey. <laughs> Jennifer, Jennifer's traveling around, getting places. That's awesome. <laughs> so that's a wonderful thing. And this reminded me a little bit of 2014 here in Colorado. There was something called Awakening Colorado. And House of Purpose had only been here for about a year. And so we took a van and we took all our people over there. Uh, but we started running into people who had moved here from other places. And they all said, I moved here because I felt like God said there's going to be a revival coming to Colorado. Oh. And so that was back in 2014. You know, I, it, I don't think it's really quite happened yet, but I really believe we're on the cusp of something. And I really think that coronavirus is a sign that we're on the cusp of something. Because I really think that Satan knew. Satan knows that there's something coming. And he's wanting to stop it. And so he thought to himself, oh, well, let's see. Let's see if I can do something that will shut all the churches down. That'll make it so people isolate, they can't get together. Let's make it so people can't touch each other or lay hands on each other. And let's also put something over their mouths, you know, so they don't even feel free to talk, right? Yeah. You know, I just really think he thought he was really crafty and smart with this. But we know that God is always way bigger than Satan. You know, Amen. Pastor Kim read that verse about his thoughts are way higher than our thoughts. And they're way higher than Satan's thoughts ever could be. You know, so he's got something big planned. I just know it. And you can see it must be super big for, for Satan to have tried this something over the whole entire earth. Right. Like he did with coronavirus. Um, so I've been reading uh, some things online about revival. And I read this uh, article by Daniel Norris. Actually, that he wrote in 2014 as well. Positioning yourself for the next wave of revival. And Daniel Norris is a surfer. And so he had some observations about revival uh, that he based on surfing. Surfing's kind of an interesting illustration of revival. And so uh, one of the things that he mentioned was that you can't control the weather, right? You know, he was like, when I go surfing, I can't control that there's going to be a wave, but I can position myself to catch a wave. And so the first thing is you have to be in the water to catch a wave, right? Mm -hmm. All of these people are positioning themselves to catch the wave. The people you can't see who are on the beach, they're not positioned. They're not in the water, so they can't, they can't catch a wave. And the people who are back in their houses, they really can't catch a wave. You know, they didn't even make it to the beach. You know, so they're never going to catch that wave. So you have to be in the water. So point number one is you have to position yourself places where revival can break out. You know, and one of those places is, like here at House of Purpose, yes. we're believing for a revival to break Amen. out. Amen. So all of you are here for this. And I know some of you are watching online and you may not even be in our state. You know, and I don't know, maybe you don't even have a church that's open yet. But if your church has anything, anything that's open at all, like small groups, I really want to encourage you, start getting out there. Unless you really have a specific word from God that says you need to be careful and not do uh, things with other people. I really think it's time to get get on. Amen. It's time to get on with things. Amen. You know, Amen. like it looks like this is maybe going to last for a little bit, kind of the masking and things like that. I just really think it's time time to get out of your house. Time, you know, you maybe don't go to huge events, but you can find something where the body of Christ is meeting and where you can get together. And those are the kind of places where revival can break out. Well, that band of there, yes, because they do pray that's right. That's right. <laughs> and invite God to their to their drag race. So that's true. Um, but it's been my experience in my life that the more that you have the people of God meeting together, the stronger the anointing is, Amen. right? Because yes. we all bring a part of the Holy Spirit with us, right? Amen. And so the more of us together, the stronger that is. And so, you know... I'm not saying that you can't experience the Lord in your house. You definitely can. But I'm just saying there is something about coming together corporately that there's even more power available. And then another thing from surfing is that you need some equipment to catch a wave, right? You know, these people all have their boards. They've got their wetsuits on. You know, and if you don't have a board, you can try walking out into the ocean, but you're probably not really going to get very far. Yeah, but don't dress like a seal. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you should not dress like a seal. That's probably a good 
A good idea, so you don't get eaten by a shark. Naturally, you would take one. Yeah, so, um, so you need the right equipment. And so we need to prepare ourselves in advance. That's point number two. And I've got some ways for us to prepare ourselves in advance. So I want us to look at Acts 1, verses 4 through 5. This is something Jesus told his disciples. This was after the resurrection, but before he ascended to his father. And it says, once when he was eating with them, he commanded them, do not leave Jerusalem until the father sends you the gift he promised, as I told you before. John baptized with water, but in just a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So that's one huge thing is we need to be baptized by the Holy Spirit. You know, and if you've never asked for that, I would encourage you, ask for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You know, there's another place where Jesus said that the Father will never deny anyone who asks for the Holy Spirit, that he will always do that for you. And so just like we can't create the wave of revival ourselves, we ourselves are not enough to bring a revival. And so we have to have Holy Spirit to have a revival. That's right. Woo-hoo! And then the next thing is in Colossians 3, uh, verse 16, the first part of it, it says, Let the word of Christ richly dwell within you. And the only way to have the word of God richly dwelling in you is to be studying it, to be reading it, to be speaking it, memorizing it. That's the way that you get that inside of you and dwelling richly. And I may have told you this before, but I have a friend who really walks a lot in um, the gifting of words of knowledge and words of wisdom. But she mentioned that kind of before she started walking in that, she asked the Lord, hey, I really would like to do that. Can you give me that gift? And she really felt like the Holy Spirit told her, there is not enough word in you for me to be able to bring it out. And so that caused her to really start digging into her Bible. You know, she said, oh, well, after that, I decided at at lunch when I was at work, I was in my Bible. Every break I had, I was in my Bible. Any chance I got, I got in my Bible. And then God started to use her in words of wisdom and words of knowledge because now suddenly there were scriptures and things that he could pull out of her. And so you've got to get that into your heart. And the time is now, before the revival hits, because we're going to have to disciple people. And then number three, or C, is begin practicing now as God opens up opportunities. And one of the best examples of this that I can think of is Sandy. Now, Sandy has many, many stories and testimonies of times that she was driving along and God told her to stop and help somebody, you know, or different things like that. And she has done it. She's actually, uh, you know, which I think is unusual, really, because how many times have we all had some sort of thought that, oh, I should help someone, and you kind of talked yourself out of it. Oh, I'm late. Oh, i got to do this. Oh, might not be safe. <laughs> you know, whatever it might be. Uh, but Sandy actually stops and goes and says, do you need help, or whatever it is. And Sandy, isn't it true that as you do that, don't you get more confident that you're really hearing the voice of God? Absolutely. Yep. So it, as you practice this and do it, You get more and more to where you're like, oh, I can tell what the voice of the Lord is versus I can tell, like, I don't don't know, that was just some weird, (laughs) some weird random thought I just had. You know, so it's, the time is now to be practicing. And so I'm going to, this is actually just part one of this, so next week I'm going to finish this. Um, But we need to be believing for revival here. In, at House of Purpose, on Colfax, in Colorado. And I really believe it's going to be coming. And so we want to be a part of it. And as we get ready to receive our offering and our prayer requests, um, we give so others may live by faith in Jesus Christ. And so if you give here, you know, you're a part of that. You're a part of bringing the light of God to our neighborhood. And so we have a couple of different ways that you can do this. You can text PURPOSE to 45777. And then that's one way. You can go to houseofpurposechurch.org to online giving. Or we are completely fine with the offering envelopes. So we we have no problem with that either. So I'm going to pray over the offering and your prayer requests. Well, dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for everything that you do for us. Lord, we thank you that you are going to send revival to us, Lord. I completely believe that. Lord, I pray that you'd help us to get ready. Pray, Lord, that you would provide for the harvest. 
I pray that you bless every person who's giving today, God, that you would give seed to the sowers so that they can be even more generous on every occasion, Lord. Lord, we pray over the prayer request too, God, that you would take care of those needs, Lord, that you will do your absolute best, your perfect will for them, Lord. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This song is called Worthy of It All. It's a beautiful, worshipful song. Oh! 
Amen. Thank you, Lord, that you've prepared our hearts to receive a word from our path through from you through our pastor, Lord Jesus. We welcome you again, Holy Spirit. Amen. We're doing some recordings, so have you seen the services like on YouTube through the YouTube channel and all that? So we had a couple of them come out. You know, we had uh, a few things that we had to work on. So we're working on some timing with that so that we get it out. But one came out last night, Pastor Cam. That was awesome. Huh? So that was great. That was great. So these guys work hard. I mean, you know, this guy, this lady on videos. So Kim and Kim and Matt, they do an incredible job. We appreciate them. Amen. All right. So, you know what we're going to talk about today, as soon as Matt is ready. We're going to talk about, you ready? Yep, you're ready. All right. Creative maintenance. Creative maintenance. You're like, what is that? What on earth is creative maintenance? Well, you were created in the image of God. And so... In the image of God, God was the creator, so now, you know what? You have the ability to create things. You can do amazing things. God-inspired ideas is what I like to call them. And you know, God works incredibly in us. So let's discover what creative maintenance is and how we take care of that attribute that God shared with us. Because we can do so many things that are creative, can't we? We've, there's artists, there's musicians, there's people that do poetry, there's things that you do. I know Sandy does some incredible things with quilting. Amen? Amen. But in order to understand exactly what we're supposed to do and maintain it, we need to receive it from God. Amen? Say receive it. Receive it. So we're going to take a look at Ephesians chapter um, 2, verse 8 through 10. And the Word of God says, you're saved by God's grace because of your faith. Amen? We're saved by grace through faith. Amen? Not of works. This salvation is a gift of God. It's not something you possess. It's not something you already have. In other words, it, it, it is not something you did and you can be proud of talking about salvation. Instead, we are God's accomplishment. What? Created. Say created. created. In Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. To sit around. No, to do good things. Amen? To do good things. God planned for these things, these good things to be done in the way that we live our lives. In the way that we live our lives. He created us for a special plan in the way that we live our lives. Point number one. See, God is a, is a poet. There's so many poetic books in the Bible. But he's so creative, he doesn't have to make them rhyme like man does. He doesn't have to come up with little witty phrases and things. But you know the interesting about, thing about God being a poet is he was a poet of your life. Amen. He wants to speak to you, to each of us, as a sonnet form. How do you say it, Nancy? Sonnet. Sonnet, sonnet form, not sonic flood. Sonic <laughs> form of poetry. Amen. Meaning that now we're recreated in Christ Jesus. Amen? To do good things. God planned for these good things to be in the way that we live our lives. Amen? Can we establish that from that verse? I mean, it doesn't take much to deduce that, right? So, in fact, he numbered all the hairs on your head, even if you only have a few. But the Greek word here, pomia, uh, pronounced po ye ma which means a, a good thing or a work. I mean, you don't have to hang on to that word, I mean. But the definition. A good thing. 
made or work, and it's an object verb, verb too, which means to make do. These two linguistic cousins describe a creative act of one who makes the thing that was made. The word only appears in one other place in the Bible, and that's Romans uh, chapter 1, verse 20, where it refers to the collective acts of God's creation, like we should know by examining the stars of heaven that all these things were made by God. And to reject that is to reject the author or the poet of our lives because of the fact that he made all things. We, we just uh, did a worship song. We, you know, through him, all things were made. Amen? Amen. So here it refers to the collective works of God in creation. The collective works of God in creation. The sum of things that God has made. The entirety of the things that he's made. But his greatest hit, his greatest hit of all creation, it's you. Amen? Amen. You are the pinnacle of his creation. His most fantastic work. Because he has made you different than the animals. You know, my dog ain't quite self-aware. She kind of <laughs> does certain things that you're like, are you aware of what you're doing? <laughs> of course. But we should be self-aware, right? Of what we do and what we accomplish and the way that we live. So God has created us in his image and wants us to be creative also but according to his plan you know I've seen some incredibly creative people in my life for a time uh, when I was in the insurance world for for 10 years I insured a lot of buildings I specialized a lot in commercial buildings that's what I like to do that's a desire that I had more than just houses or anything else because it took a lot more work, it took a lot more creativity to do that. And one of the buildings that I, I uh, insured was 910 Santa Fe. So it's a 910 art center, and it was specially designed by an architect. But within that art center, there were all these artists. And before long, I started insuring all their individual studios, and I enjoyed being with them. I didn't agree with them on everything, but I enjoyed their creativity. I liked to watch them build things. There was a guy that was from Iran, and he did mosaic art, you know, with the mosaic tiles and everything. And I talked to him a lot, and I talked to a lot of the people. And they would do certain things to maintain their creativity. Some things that they would go to, they would, you know, artists like to go up to the mountains or they like to go by a lake or a stream or something to get out of the atmosphere where they normally would do things. You would think I would do all my work inside my studio, but no, they don't do that. They go to beautiful places like Taos, New Mexico, and they, they do their art there. In Exodus, Chapter 26, verse 31. God is describing how to make the temple. Okay? He, re he tells Moses about it, and Moses comes down and tells the people about it. But Moses got away with God to hear the plan for God's design. And then he went down and imparted those things to artisans that would make portions of what would be the tabernacle of meeting, the tent of meeting, which was in the wilderness. And he said, make a, a veil of blue, purple, deep red yarns and fine twisted linen. Work figures of winged heavenly creatures into its design. Is this a great of God or what? Amen. Amen. And what he's trying to do is bring heaven to earth, the creativity of heaven to earth for his glory. In Exodus uh, 38, 22 through 24, and this is out of the Common English Bible, that's what CEB is. Sometimes we need to bring it down to earth in Common English. Bazil, Uri's son, Hur's grandson from the tribe of Judah, made everything that the Lord commanded Moses to make. 
working with Basile and Olib and another guy that begins with an A, his son, from the tribe of Dan, who was a gem cutter. A long name like that, you gotta do something special even. A designer and a needle worker in blue, purple, deep red yarns and fine linen. Notice he was good at this. Amen. This is what he did. This is how he rolled. Amen. The total amount of gold that was used for the construction of the whole sanctuary, the gold from the uplifted offerings, the people kept bringing stuff, was 29 K, K cars and 730 shekels in weight measured by the sanctuary shekel. God not only inspires creativity, but he also provides for it. He provides the material. He provides what they're going to need. You say, how on earth did they come up with that material in the desert? Oh, they left Egypt with all of it. They left with the spoils of Egypt. And they had all this stuff. So God not only inspires creativity, being creative, but he provides the means for his plan. Amen? Amen. You'll start to notice what you're made for as you start to see things take shape in your life. As God is being a poet, you start to, after a while, say, God, what are you doing? What are you putting together? How are you being creative with my life? How are you, what are you showing me and what are you unveiling in my life? I'm not talking about in the last two days. That's why they call it a lifespan. Amen? Amen. Because God wants to reveal some things little by little, okay? And he wants you to take it in. And he wants you to treasure it so that you would also maintain it when you receive it. Amen? Amen. In Exodus 36, 7 through 9, because they all had already brought more than enough work to, to enough to do all the work, all the skilled workers made the dwelling out of ten curtains, fine twisted linen, purple or blue, purple, those are some of my favorite colors, and deep red yarns, with the figures of winged heavenly creatures worked into their design. Each of them was 42 feet long, 6 feet wide. All the curtains were the same size. The tabernacle was completed free of debt because of the people's willingness. Gifted artisans, I want to share this point, gifted artisans. See, this is a wonderful compliment. God inspires the design, and he calls for a careful, detailed, artistic work. An artistic work. A skillful work. A work that is high quality. So when he inspires you to do something for the kingdom of heaven, it's to be of high quality. High creativity. Inspired of God. It cannot be man-made or induced by sweat and labor. No, he says you'll make your living that way. But my creativity is different than that. So I want you to enjoy what you are doing. I want you to be inspired with it. So God not only supplies the resources and the plan, but he also imparts the gifts to the individuals who are meant to accomplish his purpose for their lives. He's going to impart those things. So I always say to is we got to be thankful for what we receive. we got to treasure it. Say, well, God, what is this for? What am I supposed to do with it? You know me better than I know myself. What am I supposed to do? See, our creative vision won't come to pass quickly. It may take a generation. In fact, that kind of thing cannot be built in a month. If it's built in a month, it's probably not creative vision. Think about the ark that Noah built. It did not take no month to put all those animals inside that ark. It took a lifetime of creativity. So I believe that we each have a set of good things that God has designed for us to do with our lives. 
Isn't that exciting that he would bring that into your life? Yep. Yes, See, these, these tasks are creative, and they're, and they're also recreative. Because sometimes we think we're being creative, and we're, you know, maybe falling short a little bit. All the Word of God says all have fallen short of the glory of God. But in other words, they're part of a world redemptive work of advancing God's plan. God always has a higher purpose behind what it is that we do. And a lot of its focus is on souls, that you would use it in an incredible way to advance the kingdom of God. That was a quote by Len Wilson. Creativity in God. There's many creative types in here. Matt's a creative type with his guitar. Kim with her vocals, among other things that she does. Amazing things. Max gets creative with his motorcycles. But what for? What is it all about? Daniel with his drums. See, creativity, none of those things are accomplished in a day. By no stretch of the imagination. You know, God's marathon is a marathon and not a sprint. Okay, but it's a, it, creative muscles are exercised and, and rested during a marathon that is not accomplished in a day. See, it's not a human marathon that we're living. It's, can, it cannot be accomplished in a day, so therefore you've got to rest. I mean, you may have watched Forrest Gump at one time, and he ran a, from coast to coast, I don't know how many times. I run, Forrest, run, you remember that. But I'd venture to say he did not just keep on running the whole time. Did he sleep during that time? I, I would think, I would hope so at some point. And yet we try to accomplish it all in a day, or in a week, or in a month, don't we? See, every artist, like I shared with you earlier, every secular artist recognizes the need for rest or a change in atmosphere from time to time. A, a creative refreshing, if you will. You ever got away and all of a sudden you see things with a whole other perspective? We need creative refreshing, don't we? This is by an animator, Rachel Rao. She says, I think as an artist, you need time to create, to break away, to reset to give your mind a break from the tedious nature of what you're doing. I turn towards travel a lot for inspiration because it allows me to see new things and experience new things that spark imagination. I like that. A software developer, Kinsey Ann Durham, was looking for an act activity which she could get outside and away from her desk when she discovered fly fishing. And she found that rather than to detract from her work, getting in a river to catch fish actually supported it. Have you ever thought of things that way? Creative people think that way. Creative people know how to break away and receive inspiration, how much more so from God? How much more so from God? You know, there's times as a pastor, there's certain things that I don't necessarily enjoy doing, but they're part of God's creative work. Right now I'm doing a course, which I've been living, but sometimes living you need to learn a little bit more. And I'm doing a course on church, finance, and law. Exciting. Accounting stuff. And I'm thinking, oh, I hate this. I'm not liking this right now. So every once in a while, to get back and get a spark to get back into it, I will step away from it and spend some other time with God. I might get into doing a little bit of the worship practice or something and then come back into it. If I didn't, I would get nothing out of it. 
Amen? It would be just continually blah, 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 blah. Yeah, credits, debits, yeah, whatever. You know? But we need a spark inside. We need creative maintenance going on in our lives. So God wants to refresh creativity. So he called for a set-aside time to rest. But not just to lay down on a couch and rest. But to be with him. To receive additional inspiration. Aside from myself being so wrapped up in it, I need a spark. And God knows that you need a spark. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 1 through 3, the heavens and the earth and all who live in them were completed. And on the sixth day, God completed all his work that he had done. And on the seventh day, God rested from all his work that he has done. Do you think God needed to rest? Seriously. Probably not. So God, he says, guess what? I'm going to bless the seventh day. I'm going to make it holy. Because on it, God rested from all his work in creation. God is not needing a rest. He's needing to set an example for us. So he creates the, the Sabbath, which is a place where we can go rest in God. It doesn't have to be a specific day. Because, look. If you work at Amazon, you may not get Sunday off, you may not get Saturday off or whatever, but you got to have some inspiration. Amen? Oh, and he's raising his hand, Amazon. I get off Sundays. <laughs> some don't. So let me ask you, if God doesn't need rest, what is he showing us? What is this principle? What is it? It's creative maintenance. It's creative maintenance. You need fresh inspiration from God. So you spend time with God. Because, and, and you don't just set aside a day. You may say, I need to break away right now and I need to get with God and I need to rest in Him. Because He's a God that never sleeps. He's God. God finished making the heaven and earth for man's sake. He rested from his creative activity. And on the seventh day, to show his love, his providential care for man, and to invite them into his rest, to invite them into a place where that they could receive a spark from heaven. And that's what you came here today for, to get with God. Not simply to hear the pastors say a whole bunch of words that might be meaningless. No, it has to have a spark to it. It has to ignite my soul. And one word from God can turn everything around. You can say, well, I never really thought of it that way. And what does it do? It sparks and it inspires creativity inside of us, doesn't it? So man, what did man do? He failed to keep the Sabbath rest. But Jesus then again comes and he fulfills it by resting in the tomb on the great and holy day of Saturday after he said it was finished on the cross. Then he destroys sin and death. And then what does he do? He rises again he rises again on the first day of the week. Through his saving work on behalf of mankind, he is man's Sabbath rest. He is the rest. Jesus is the rest. Praise God. Mm -hmm. And now he invites all to find rest in him. He invites everyone. Basically what he says, if you do it your own way, then you can't enter into his rest. Because you don't want to. Amen. You're so consumed with doing it your way. You know our world is full of doing it your way. Suck it up. Pick up your boots and go. But God is wonderful to us. Amen. He creates an experience where that you can have creative maintenance happen in your life while you rest in Him. Amen. Where you can have a spark. 
in Matthew 11, verse 28 through 30 out of the Common English Bible, come to me. He says, come to me, all you that are struggling and carrying heavy loads. Come to me. I'm in front of my house waiting for a freight company to come and deliver a motorcycle lift table that's hydraulic. Part of my creative hobby of working on motorcycles. I sold something so I could buy it. God supplied the needs, right? And so it needs to come and the thing weighs all components together 600 pounds. Okay? So I'm on the phone, and by the way, I ordered it through Amazon. So I'm on the phone talking to the freight company. I said, you know, freight company, I said, you got a lift gate and all that, right? Because I need you to come down the alley and, you know, to my garage so I can have it offloaded. So they show up with a lift gate, but it's a 28 foot trailer. And they give me a call, a robo call, before they get there. So they come down the street with his truck. He says, well, I don't know if I can go down the alley because there's telephone lines and all that kind of stuff. He says, let me check it out. He drives around there. I already have my pickup truck parked in the street. Some reason I knew that was God's creativity. So, and I don't normally park it there, right, Nancy? So, then the freight driver says, guess what? I can't do it. I can't go down there. I'll tear up the, you know, the, the, you know, the electrical lines. All that. So uh, we got to be creative, okay? So I said, let me back my pickup truck up to your truck with your lift gate. So we lowered the lift gate down. We got it on there. And then I said, you know what? Now I drive it around in my garage, and I'm like, there's no way. I can't even push it, push it off of my legs. Got to get creative. Amen? So before long, I'm thinking of all these things, and all of a sudden, you know, it dawns on me. God just says, why don't you just uncreate it? Right where it is. Okay. <laughs> start on creating it. Start taking components out. Um, and then, God's timing is perfect. Because then, you know, I get my four-wheel dollies out. You know, I got the pickup truck parked in the garage. You know, half part way in. And I know where I'm going to position it. And, you know, then I start to pull it back and set it on one four-wheel dolly. At the same time, I had a contractor working on something in the yard. He's working on it. Uh, something perfect timing. He takes off his headphones. You know, this guy's glued to his headphones. He's listening to music the whole time. And I said, Chris. He goes, what? He never hears you because he's got his headphones on. He goes, what? I said, could you come here a minute? So we grabbed it, and then we put another four-wheel dolly uh, under it and spun it around and got it done. How many of you know God got, got a good way to do everything? <laughs> Amen? Yeah. Long story short, God makes it happen. Amen? If, you know, I could have hurt myself doing this stuff, right? And just struggled through, and, and maybe I wouldn't even be standing here today because I would have had a hernia or something. And instead of it being a thing of joy, it could have been an immense burden. That's what I'm getting at. Have you been there? Where life becomes more of a burden. What I used to enjoy has now become a labor to me. I'm actually working too much by the sweat of my brow. I used to like this, you might say. So God is speaking to you here today. He wants to create a spark of joy in what it is that you do, in what it is that he's made you for, and what it is that he's provided for. But yet we can lose our joy Point number seven, when we don't find rest in Christ to be refreshed in creative creativity, we cease from receiving creative refreshment from the Creator. Do you know what else happened to that day? I had a meaningful conversation with the freight truck driver. You know what might have happened? The old way I was, I might have been quite angry and upset. This ain't working. I, I talked to him. I told him. <laughs> Instead, I find out this guy's a veteran. We have a huge conversation. We're having a good time doing it. 
I'm not even thinking about what this thing weighs anymore at that point. You know, it's a different experience, right? But it, it might not have been. If we are all stressed out about what we were doing. So when we fail to rest in Christ and be refreshed in creativity, we cease from receiving creative refreshment from God. Why would we want to cease from receiving creative refreshment from God? That's part of our creative maintenance. Do you find that you burn out? What used to bring you joy now has become a burden. It's time for refreshment. Amen? Amen? It's like a little lemonade stand on the side of the road with some little kids smiling at you. Do you want to pull over and get a 10 cent cup of refreshment? So God all the time is smiling at us saying, hey, would you like some refreshment or you want to keep struggling here? What is it? Do you need to take a break? Do you need to get away from what it is you're doing to hear me? Do you need to realize and say, hey, you know what? Maybe I need to take a break and maybe I need to take a rest and I need to get refreshed with God. Because like those artists, see, they, they understood that in one case the fly fishing helped and in another case this helped. But, you know, it might help for a little while, but can you imagine here breaking away and just going to the mountains and hearing from God? I know Sandy likes to go to the mountains. Amen. And God knows that. He wants to bring refreshment into your soul. A spark of energy. A spark of creativity. In your life. Acts 3.19. You think of this about repenting. So repent. Change your inner self. Your old way of thinking. Regret past sins or ways of doing it your own way. And return to God and seek his purpose for your life again. Amen? Seek his purpose for your life so that your sins may be wiped away and blotted out and all your stress would be gone. So that times of what? Refreshing would come. From the presence of the Lord. Restoring you like a cool wind on a hot day. Like a cool wind on a hot day. We need refreshing like that, don't we? Say boom like that. Boom like that. That's what we need. And when that's a spark, right? So let's review a minute. God's a poet. And each of us is what? A sonnet. A sonnet. Not a bonnet, a sonnet. A poetic form recreated by Christ to do good things. God planned these good things to be that way as we live our lives. God created us in his image and wants us to be a creative according to his plan. God not only inspires us to be creative, but he provides the means in the plan. It's like, I, I want this. I, I'm going to give you what you, you need. But my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus of my Lord. Amen? Amen. God not only supplies the resources for his plan, but he imparts the gifts to the individual that's meant to be accomplished for his purpose in our lives. Creativity in God is not a day-long marathon. It's not even a week-long marathon. It's a lifetime marathon which requires refreshing and growing. Matt, did you le learn to play the guitar overnight? Yeah. <laughs> help me, brother, help me. <laughs> I came on board, but I was just bored. You came right out of the womb. Yeah, it took many, many hours of practice. <laughs> many hours of practice, many hours. Amen, amen. Kim, singing. Long, long time. Many years. Uh -huh. Gift was there, but it took development. Right? Oh, God. Yeah. A lot of time in God. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Anyone else? Can you relate? Hey, Pastor Ron ran marathons. You ran marathons, sir? There we go. 
Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Did you run a mile every, in a day every day? Or? I ran six miles every morning. Wow. Practicing. wow. Practicing for the big one, right? Wow, I did not know that. Did you know that about Ron? Wow. wow. I got a friend of mine that's actually on the board of House of Purpose. He was a, a uh, safety for Ohio State. And he also later got drafted by Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And we used to tell all the kids, this guy could run faster backwards than you kids can run forward. Don't test him. It's like the old bull, you know? <laughs> the old bull has got this stuff down. So, um, I'm not saying you're old, Ron. No, I didn't say that. Fuck in my heart. <laughs> so, God's marathon, it's not a sprint. It's not a sprint. Listen to what Apostle Paul talks about. I ran the, the race and I finished the course. It took him a lifetime of creativity to accomplish what he did. How he inspired and spoke into Timothy's life, into Titus' life. And he wrote the letters of Philippians, Ephesians, and all those things inspired by God. See, when we fail, when, God, when we fail to be refreshed, God wants to refresh our creativity. He wants, and it's so much that he set the example of rest in the Sabbath. And when we fail to rest in Christ, when we fail and we think we need to keep pressing forward without receiving a, a creative spark and creative maintenance, we find ourselves in trouble, don't we? I mean, let's be honest with ourselves. Um, ministry, stress. I want to share with you about pastors and emotional burnout, blowout. Morality and all those things that you see in the news, it doesn't happen overnight. They don't get up one morning and just decide, I'm going to burn out. Has anybody ever got up in the morning and said, I'm going to burn out today? No. Yep. no. We don't do that. You don't suddenly have a blowout morally. Other statistics, many of these suggest pastors have struggle, uh, you know, professionalizing their spiritual lives, and failing to care for their souls under God. Listen to these statistics and you'll see why. Sometimes you get so wrapped up in what it is that you do that you fail to have the creative soul maintenance that you require. And it's easy to fall into it. And sometimes, unfortunately, some pastors fall into it. 53% of pastors do not feel that Bible college uh, or seminary prepared for them adequately. 70% do not have someone they consider a close friend. That's pretty scary. 50% don't meet regularly with accountability person or a group. I do. I've got a lot of them around me. It's important that you've got accountability people around you. Wants to say, hey, you know what? Don't you think it's time you took a rest? Or don't you think you're off your rocker with that idea? <laughs> I've got people like that around me. The guy that ran backwards used to tell me that. David, David it's a great idea, but I think you're off your rocker with that one. 50% don't meet with an accountability person or group. 72% only study the Bible when preparing for sermon or lessons. Guess what? That's professionalism. Okay? It's not a creative spark. Although I enjoy spending time with God and getting into this and, doing, and, and being involved in this message. But I need other times. Amen? I need other times. 21%. Spend less than 15 minutes in prayer. The average is 20, 39 minutes per day. 16% are very satisfied with their prayer life. 16%. 47% somewhat satisfied. 37% other either somewhat satisfied or very dissatisfied. It's like I'm torn between two opinions here. Spending more time, quiet prayer, listening to God versus making requests correlation with higher satisfaction. 
You know, you may think as a, as a pastor, and I'm speaking to someone here today, because I know this is going around the internet, I'm like, you know, you get wrapped up in praying for people, and you got the prayer requests and everything else, but, you know, God wants to speak to you, and He wants to spend some time with you, Pastor. He wants to say something and speak something into your life, and you have to break away. You're going to have to break away, or something is going to break in you. Something's got to give. And if we don't break away and spend the sufficient time with a creative God, something breaks in us, doesn't it? Yes, amen. 44% of pastors don't take a regular day off. Can you? Uh, I got to tell you, being a pastor is not a profession. It's not even a job. It's not even a vocation. It's a calling. And it has to be creatively maintained. It has to be. 85% never took a sabbatical, meaning they're going to take a little bit of time off. They don't have anyone else to come help them preach. We were able to take time off, Nancy and I, and take you know a week off and came back and Kim was ready to preach. I didn't have to kind of cram it in by the time I got back on Friday for Sunday. Things should never happen that way. That's not creativity. That's cramming it in. Amen? Amen. we got to hear from God. Amen. So I want to pray today. First, I want you to have a spark in your life, and I don't know whether you had received Christ, which is the spark of life. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes unto the Father except through me. He is the very window of creativity for your soul. He's the very door of creativity. So I want to make sure first and foremost that if you have not received Christ and you haven't received the inspiration of power of the Holy Spirit to come dwell in you, why well, then you are missing out on a great deal of creativity, an incredible amount, because he's the creator. So let's pray in that regard first. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. I thank you so much. I thank you so much. That you are creative. That you are creative. That you have made. That you have made. So many things. So many things. The word of God says. The word of God says. Without you. Without you. Nothing was made. Nothing was made without you. Without you. In you, in you, we breathe. We breathe. Have life. Have life in our being. In our being. We give our lives. We give our lives to you. To you. We ask for. We ask refreshment. for refreshment. Refreshment. Thank you for dying for our sins. Thank you for dying for our sins. Thank you for rising again. Thank you for rising again. Providing this wonderful. Providing this wonderful Sunday, Sunday, Sabbath day, Sabbath day to spend with you. To spend with you. Amen. 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 I want to pray one more prayer with you. We got to submit. We got to say, hey, God is speaking to me here today, and there needs to be a response. There needs to be a response. There needs to be a desire to to have this creative maintenance that we're talking about here today. So I want to pray with you here today. Pray with me, please. Lord, Lord, you are a creative God. You are a creative God. I am made in your image. I am made in your image. I want to. I want to understand. Understand creativity. Creativity. And also. And also. Rest in you. Rest in you. I thank you. I thank you. Because. Because. You do not care. You do not care. Just about me. Just about me. You care about my rest. You care about my rest. My rest in you. My rest in you. I seek. I seek. To have more balance. To have more balance. In maintaining. In maintaining. The creative gift. The creative gift. That you. That you. Have imparted. Have imparted. In my life. In my life. Amen. We're going to worship God for it today. Can we do that? I want to um, give Matt a recognition today for his birthday. I want to sing happy birthday to him. We got a card for him. Woohoo, Matt! Woohoo! Yeah. You know, 
Um, this whole process, it, it's amazing, it kind of just is a good example of what Pastor David was talking about because of the, we've been a team for almost 10 years and we were reviewing things from even just five years ago and we would not have been ready to put together an online service even you know three to five years ago and over Matt's lifetime he's gotten all this you know professional equipment to help us do this so it's kind of neat to be able to put the skills and the assets together to to do this and we put the time in to, to build up our skills so so it's it's kind of neat to see how God's doing that and Amen. so let's sing happy birthday to Matt <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Matt. Happy birthday to you. All right. Praise God. I'm so thankful for Matt.
guys are some amazing worshipers out there. It just, I, I love it. Thank you for being here. Thank you for worshiping. And Lord, we just thank you for your presence here today. And this was a, a, an amazing word. And I, I can't wait to apply it to my life. And just, uh, the, it's a super powerful message. And we thank you, Lord, for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you. We're going to open the resource room soon. And if you wouldn't.